You might think cannibalism is just some good innocent fun, but really it's quite dangerous. In fact, some people see it as something of a taboo. Of course, I'm not one of those people. I think if done with proper guidance, cannibalism can be a positive life experience. It's what made me the man I am. But for most of history, society has seen cannibalism in a rather dim light. And to be fair, there's a good reason for that. Across the world, there have been cases of cannibalism that went a little too far. Cases of expeditions to uncharted regions descending into murder, of strange cults teaching parents to eat their children, and of even more nightmarish scenarios. Going into the 1600s, Europeans were increasingly settling and exploring the New World. As their grip on this new land grew stronger, all kinds of disturbing stories flooded back to Europe, often centering on acts of cannibalism. Many of their settlements found life hard in the Americas, isolated in unfamiliar terrain with limited supplies. Starvation crippled their upstart towns, some communities descending into a frenzy of cannibalism. But it wasn't just the Europeans. Many native cultures had long practiced human consumption, so it makes sense that so many of history's worst cannibals are from this part of the world. Among them was a man called Boone Helm. Better known as the Kentucky Cannibal, he is thought to have been America's first serial killer. Many attribute that title to H. H. Holmes, but at the time of Boone Helm's death, Holmes was just three years old. Helm was born into a good family in 1820s Kentucky, but he was unlike either of his parents. For whatever reason, he grew up depraved and violent. His predisposition to crime gave him a bad name locally, so before long he decided to move to California. It was the age of California's gold rush, and he dreamed of striking it rich. So he approached a cousin of his, inviting them to join him. But when the cousin refused, Helm flew into a rage and stabbed them to death. While in California, he murdered several other men, again forcing him to relocate. He joined a gang of outlaws, who stole and plundered their way across the Old West. But while the gang were in southern Idaho, they were attacked by an army of natives, forcing them to flee into the mountains. Now they were in an uncharted wilderness during winter, the worst possible scenario. In a matter of days, they had killed all their horses for food, but that wasn't enough to save them. As they stumbled through the snow, members of the gang gradually died off, until it was just Boonhelm and one other. It was pure strength of character that pushed them on, but that alone was not enough, and eventually Helm's last companion shot himself. The effect of this suicide was to transform Boonhelm into a monster. Alone in the wilderness, and exhausted from days of trekking on foot, he became the Kentucky Cannibal. He cut off a man's legs, consuming one there, and wrapping up the other one for later. By chance he was rescued by a passing Mormon, and taken to the tiny settlement of Salt Lake City. Here he recovered, but now with a taste for human flesh, never returns to his former self. So much of his life is unknown, we know he kills at least 11 people, but it could be 4 times that, or even more. It's said at one point he was sent to an insane asylum, but was able to escape. Either way, he soon returns to a life of crime, stealing and gunfighting in the state of Oregon. He regularly consumed the flesh of his victims, and bragged about it openly. Whenever Helm was arrested for any of his murders, he would simply pay off witnesses, and the case would fall apart. He seemed untouchable, but an insane, murderous, thieving cannibal could only last so long in the Old West. After a 14-year-long crime spree, Boonhelm was captured by a group of vigilantes, who gave him an unofficial trial and hanged him. Despite their best effort to keep it secret, 6,000 people showed up to witness his execution. So not only have these men decided to execute him for the innocent pursuit of cannibalism, they couldn't even keep it a secret. Every continent has at one time or another been witness to acts of cannibalism, even Antarctica. In medieval Europe, it became fashionable for wealthy nobles to consume ancient corpses. The corpses themselves were ancient Egyptian mummies. Failing to understand how such mummies had been preserved, it was believed eating them could help extend life. 
Usually, the mummy's remains were ground into a powder and sold as a food supplement. But with the powder coming from shady, faraway sources, many found they had really been sold the remains of slaves and criminals, who had died only recently. For obvious reasons, this craze soon fell out of favour. But brief as it was, it's likely the most widespread case of cannibalism of all time. Yet in the grand scheme of things, that's nothing special. On the other side of the world can be found various peoples notorious for cannibalism, deep in the jungles of Papua New Guinea. It's unknown for how long it has been part of their culture, but as many tribes were until recently uncontacted by the outside world, some only stopped eating human in the last few decades. In fact, some parts of the country are not yet fully explored, and rumour has it cannibalism is still going on. Among those who were most reluctant to give up the practice are the four people, Traditionally, they would engage in ritualistic cannibalism, consuming the flesh of recently deceased tribe members. But with conditions being brutal, there was a near constant supply of corpses to be eaten. In the 1950s, it was discovered they were eating so much human flesh, they began to develop a deadly brain disorder. The problem is they were eating too much brain, which sometimes contains a deadly form of protein called prions. Consume prions and you contract a disorder similar to mad cow disease. The kind this tribe developed is called Kuru. First sign you have Kuru is a lack of control over your muscles. In time, you will be unable to even walk unassisted and suffer involuntary bursts of laughter. Kuru is always fatal, as the prions you consume eat away at your brain, literally leaving holes where brain matter should be. But unaware of how the disease spread, they would eat the brains of people who died from it. And so the disease spread to thousands, becoming an epidemic in their already small community. Eventually, modern medicine reached the area, and they stopped practicing cannibalism. But one of the worst qualities of the disease is its long incubation period. A person could have Kuru for decades before seeing any symptoms. So while they stopped eating human in the 1960s, many of them still had the disease eating away at their brain. The last known victim of Kuru only developed symptoms in 2004, dying the next year.